Hi everyone, I'm Kelly and in today's video we're going to be painting a branch of uh, white uh, little flowers there uh, from the black thorn tree and uh, we'll also be adding some of the little um, berries to it. So we're going to kind of have a combination branch and berries and I'm going to be working on tan paper today. Um, this is my uh, Stillman and Byrne uh, sketchbook with tan paper and I like this because the paper is uh, nice and heavyweight so that if uh, my painting comes out nice I can take it out of my book and I can hang it up. I'm also going to be using white gouache. Um, you want either gouache or you could use acrylic paint or white ink. You don't want to use white watercolor because it's just not uh, opaque enough. Um, we're going to be doing this in the style of Chinese brush painting. So I am going to be using my um, small stiff haired brush, which is the happy dot brush and then a smaller detail brush. And I have a small selection of watercolor paints and I'll put the colors that I'm using in the description box below. So you'll have all the supplies and I've gone ahead and I've pre wet them. So that way they are ready and waiting for me. I'm going to pick up some of my brown and my paints nice and soft. So it makes it much easier to work with. Um, if you've ever noticed that when you paint with uh, pan watercolors that they're just not uh, concentrated enough. Um, it's because you haven't pre-wet them. You really do need to soften them up so that they work well. Okay, so we're just going to start painting a bunch of branches. And if you've seen any of my videos on painting um, plum blossoms, um, you'll know it's, it's a pretty similar process. And I'll put a link to the plum blossom video in the description box below as well so that you can refer to that. So we're just going to start and we're going to make just some branches. And we're going to have them come down and around and I'm going to make one a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some blue to my brown. You could use black ink. Um, I'm just doing this all in watercolor because uh, if you don't have ink it makes it a little hard to do. And we'll have a branch come down this way. We'll make that branch a little thicker. Normally in Chinese brush you do not um, go back over your work, but we're going to break that rule and we'll make adjustments as we need to. And I'm going to have lots of branches going around and I'm going to have leave gaps for flowers and leaves and the, the, um, black thorn berries, which are also called slow berries. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm going to switch to my gouache and I put the gouache in a little pan um, just so that I can have it. But um, you can also just take it right out of the, the tube. And we're going to start painting uh, the flowers. So let's have Let's have a nice big cluster of flowers here. And the difference between a um, blackthorn flower and a plum blossom, plum blossom is rounder and the um, blackthorn kind of looks like a flower, like a raspberry um, or blackberry flower um, where it's a little bit thinner at the top. So we're going to make our strokes so that we have one side a little bit thinner than the other. And it's still a five petaled flower, just like the plum blossom. So if you're familiar with painting plum blossoms, be nice and easy for you. And I have really thick paint, as you can see, and this is, this is great. We want it nice and thick because it needs to be opaque so that we can actually work with it. And now I'm going to have other flowers kind of tucked in and around. And when I do little strokes that are kind of horizontal, that's trying to show that one of the petals is kind of curved up and it's foreshortened. And don't forget you want little buds. And normally you would not see berries and 
um, flowers on the same branches um, because they generally flower and then the fruit forms after the flower is uh, pollinated. But in this case, we're gonna take a little creative license with stuff. So I'm gonna keep the fruits kind of down here on this one. So let's, let's keep going with our flowers here and we'll have, we'll do a lot of, we'll do a lot of flowers. And I can go over my branches because it's thick paint and change up the size of the flowers, change the position of them. You know, I like, I like these big full flowers because we're going to have some fun with the, um, the centers. So we're just going to keep going, put, you know, singles, petals as um, buds, and they can be a little more, you know, rounded off if you would like. I'm kind of bouncing all around, seeing what needs a flower or something. And we can go back in and we can um, add some leaves to these and just keep adding paint to your brush as you need it. If your brush really dries out and you can't get any paint, then just dip the tip of the brush in water and that will, that will help you out. And we'll connect all these buds that are kind of hanging off into nowhere. We'll make them, we'll make them all look nice, don't worry. And I like going over anything that you've done so you don't have to worry. Oh, I didn't leave a space there. That's fine, you can go over it. All right, we have, we have flowers. And let's give those a chance to dry. And let's add some clusters of uh, fruit. And the uh, slow berries or blackthorn berries are uh, kind of a purplish blue. So I have some violet paint here and I'm gonna add some of my blue to that. The fruits uh, are, are very round. So we have this nice kind of side branch here. So let's, let's do that. We'll, we'll kind of make our little clusters of fruit and I'm gonna kind of group them together. And we've got another bit here. We'll have another one here. And I'm just, you know, kind of clustering them. They kind of hang together in clusters. So, and they can, they can be individual as well. So we can have one here and maybe we'll have one kind of off here. Okay, let's let those dry before we add details. Uh, Cause you want the details to kind of sit on top of things. And let's switch to our, our little detail brush. Let's give that a, make sure that's wet. And let's start adding some leaves. And I'm going to be using sap green because my sap green is a nice kind of yellowy green. And let's start adding some little leaves. I push down and I kind of release the pressure. So I push and then I lift up and you can make a bigger leaf by going over it. And the more you press on the the brush, the bigger the leaves will be, the less pressure, the smaller, and just start filling in. Now we want some leaves with our, um, our nice fruits, but these are gonna be bigger. So let's, let's do two strokes next to each other. You can change the color. So let's add a few leaves that are a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue to my green, I'll make a darker color. You could also mix in uh, some of our brown. So let's, okay. We'll go back to our, our brown color. And now it's time to add some details. And we're gonna start attaching all of these buds. So, and I'm, I'm kind of making a little support for the, or a little base for all of these some of these are gonna kind of float and that's all right. They don't have to connect completely. Um, but we do want them, we do want any of them that are kind of hanging off to be 
somewhat connected. You won't really see a lot of the the stems for the bigger leaf, uh, bigger plants, but that's all right. All right, now let's connect our fruit because we need to do that. Let's add the center of uh, some of these bigger flowers and that is with uh, green. It's kind of a yellowy green so I'm going to put a little circle kind of in the center of these and then our stamen will be right in uh, the center of those. Now let's pick up very thick gouache. I'm going to zoom in a bit so that you can see what I'm working on. And I'm going to put thin little strokes all around. And these are the, the stamen. So I'm just kind of going around and be, and if it's nice and thick, it will, it will stand up and it will it'll show a little bit better once we put the um, stamen on. And normally I would just go all around, but I want you to see this close up and then I'll zoom back out and we'll finish all of this. So I have this kind of nice reddish orange uh, pearlescent paint and with a very dry brush and very thick paint. I'm going to add the, the stamen, which the tops of them, which are just little, little dots. And I'll just, I'll go around. You make some big, make some small. Um, and that will just add a really nice kind of touch to the painting. All right, I'm gonna move back out a bit. And now I'm gonna go back to my gouache and then just kind of zip around and finish this. just going to mix up some more of my blue and my purple together try and get an even darker color dry my brush off a bit and then I'm just going to give them a little bit of an outline just a quick outline just to Give them just another level of detail. And then you could, with just a tiny bit of the, the white, you could add a little highlight on your fruit. And then if you wanted, you could take some of your green and a little bit of your brown to make a really dark green color. Again, not too much water on your um, 
brush and you could add veins to your leaves. You could do it to some of them, to all of them. You could use it to connect them to the plant itself. And it just uh, gives another, another little tiny bit of detail. And we have this kind of big gap here. So I think what I'll do is I'll put a couple of leaves just to kind of tidy that section up a little bit. We'll put a couple of, a couple more flowers in and around here. And this is one of the nice things, you know, you can go back, you can look at your paintings, you can say, what do they need? What are they missing? You know, and you can, you can make adjustments. They, they grow organically, make changes. Even if you have a plan, you know, sometimes the, the paintings want to do something different. And there you have it, a little uh, study of the blackthorn uh, tree. And we have our flowers, we have our uh, slow berries on it. And uh, I hope you like this. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button so you'll be notified uh, when I post another video. Um, I do hope you try this. And if you do, please share your work on Instagram and tag it tutorials with Kelly so that I can see it and like it. And I'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.